guys so hopefully you guys had a nice little break we are back obviously with part two i know this can be a lot of information that's why i went ahead and split this into two videos hopefully making it a little bit easier for you guys to absorb all of the information that you need to absorb uh let's go ahead and jump back in uh i believe we left off at what was it bottom fishing so let's go ahead and jump back in on bottom fishing and we're back okay so we let's go ahead and finish off bottom fishing when it comes down to bottom fishing, the next thing that's going to that's pop up for you is going to be your bait fishing rig. This is huge for the people who like to fish out at Actuba for those really weird named big fish that, that, that make a lot of money. Starts with a B. Can't remember the name. They just call them bells. This is also great for sturgeon as well as basically pike fishing and stuff like this. There are some people that will max this out and absolutely positively love this. So it's really up to you, but up to this point, you're pretty much going to know what you want to do. I would highly suggest doing a bunch of bottom fishing, bottom bait fishing and seeing the big fish that you're going to catch and seeing if you enjoy that to use this. Cause I know a lot of people that don't actually use this until they decide, Hey, we're going to go and start fishing for, you know, beluga or whatever. And then they'll max this out. But until then, they don't do that. I don't use a chod rod. Chod rod. Most people don't use a chod rod. If you want to see what a chod rod is, here's a chod rod. Let's go look at a chod rod. I just like saying chod rod. Chod rod. That's a chod rod. Basically, it's this. It's 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 very phallical looking. Yeah. Basically, what it is, it's a weight that has the bait a little bit further up instead of down on the line. So it allows the weight to be placed very precise and to float above the weight and the, the, the bait to be floated above the weight. This used to be kind of popular when the game first started out. It's not really popular anymore. Um, the same thing with the, uh, where is it? <clears throat> where is it? The maggot snap-in rig. Um, basically, that's just a big pile of maggots on your, on your bait on your hook this used to be kind of popular um for a little while but people really don't use these two anymore so i would hold off on those if i were you when you get up to pv stick pva sticks congratulations you are awesome i'm almost there 91.3 percent let's move on okay so i need to interrupt or interject myself at this point in time basically what i noticed when i was leaving the bottom fishing skill uh, skill tree I forgot to talk about method rigs and method pop-up rods basically uh, or I should say method pop-up method pop-up rigs and the classic method rig basically when it comes down to the method rig let's go ahead and talk about real quick let me just show you this real quick uh, when you go into your feeder and you go down to your method, the method is actually really cool because technically it's actually like a pattern master uh, rig. But the fact of the matter is, is it's got a different kind of cage on it. It's called a method cage, basically. Uh, and what it is, is it is basically a pattern master rig that allows you to use boilies on it. So in a way, it's kind of a replacement or... I guess you could say it's 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 another way of doing a PVA stick or a pattern astral rig with uh, with a pattern astral uh, a cage. I guess I don't know how to really explain it, but it's basically a pattern astral rig that allows you to use uh, boilies. Okay, this is actually a really really cool skill because it can replace a PVA stick because you can use. Um, some nice very viscous very sticky sticky ground bait and you stick. Um, if we go ahead and change over to that actual rig, uh, method rig, it, you can stick a, where is it, method feeder. You can stick very, very sticky uh, uh, ground bait on there and it'll slowly dissolve. And it's really nice rig because you can actually use a lot of the, the ingredients that you would normally use for like a PVA stick. So it's actually kind of a, a pre-replacement uh, or a pre-PVA stick, if you will. It's like a combination of a, a pattern astral rig as well as a PVA stick type of rig. The problem with this is, is it's so close to a PVA stick. And by that point, you can use spod rods. Um, I honestly don't really suggest maxing any of these out the fact of the matter is i mean you could but it's at 90 percent when you open these up so 
you only got 10% and then you're going to be using PVA sticks and your spot rods will work just as well um, in spotting and, and attracting fish. Uh, you really don't need to use the method rigs to be completely honest. I have used them. I've used them for sterlet and sturgeon fishing and stuff like that. And they're actually pretty great. But to be honest with you, um, you're going to put, you know, if you're a heavy bottom feeder fisherman, you're going to put points into this and then within probably you know a few days maybe a few weeks depending on how often you play you're going to have this opened up anyway so then those you're not going to be using this anymore so those are kind of a waste of points i like it a lot i just really wish that these opened up much much sooner they literally should open up either before or after spot rods in my opinion so my personal opinion they're just too close to pva sticks i wouldn't use them let's go ahead and jump back to the video and we'll finish it off okay spin fishing oh by the way cooking there's no skills in here you don't have to worry about any of your cooking or, or anything over there spin fishing <clears throat> right off the bat you need to decide if you want to spin fish if you're going to be a feeder fisherman great go to Oldberg, have fun if you're going to be fin spin fishing you're going to start at winding rivulet and you're going to be doing spinner baits you're going to your setup at winding rivulet is going to be able to take you to bell belay river and you're going to be using spinning spinning spinner baits up there. Watch this. Yeah, that's how confident I am. I like about spinner baits. Should have done that a long time ago. If you're <clears throat> low level and you're jumping up to your your spinner, you're you're jumping up to winding rivulet and you're jumping up to Belaya and you're spinnering and you're you're spinnering more and more. That's just a weird way of saying spinner bait. Max it out. That's all I'm saying. Just max it out. It's one of the good ones to do. Max it out. Let's actually talk about your spinning reels. Okay, this is part of your real, uh, your real point skill selection, if you will. I'm procrastinating because I'm trying to figure out how to actually explain this. <clears throat> Casting distance and accuracy. It doesn't have control over the fish. So there's pros and cons with this. Some people say, no, get away from this. Don't even use this. Save the five points, put them somewhere else, put them, put them in a rod, okay? And that makes sense because that you'll get some control if you put them in a rod. When it comes down to <clears throat> spinning reels, spinning reels, however, are the most used reel in the game. You're going to be using them all the way to the end game. So let's say you want control over every single pull that you put a spinning reel on. That may be when you want to possibly max this out. If you're using this, you will have the accuracy. You won't need to put anything into your rods for accuracy or casting distance, which you shouldn't anyway. You should be putting them into the rods for control of fish. If I have a choice between spinning rod and the spinning reel, I would probably go back and re-respec and use the spinning rod just so I can have more control over the fish. However, this is such a wide, it, it covers so many setups. It covers Balinese rods because this is a multiple skill skill. Using spinning reel, spin fishing, bottom fishing, using spinning reel float fishing using spinning reel. So you put five into it and you get five on three different things. That's why I first initially put five into this. So it's up to you. This can make it so you don't ever have to put any, any points into your rods for accuracy or dist casting distance. However, it's not gonna help you on control of the fish that you actually need to put points into your spinning rod. If when I go, uh, when I rank up and I respec, I'm probably not going to put any, any into this. I'm going to use those points. I'm going to put it into my spinning rod, plain and simple. Okay. But when you're leveling, this may be a good thing for you because it gives you a moniker of control over your accuracy and your casting distance that you don't, it makes it so you don't actually have to spec out every one of your rods because every one of your rods is seven freaking points. That's so many points. 
You know what I'm saying? So it's up to you if you want to do that or not. Personally, if I had to do it again, I'd probably do it the same way. Once I get high enough rank, I'll respec and I'll switch all of these points over to like spinning rod and then I'll put up some extra points into some other rods. But this has really been helpful for me because I use spinning rods on everything. Balinese, spinning, you know, f uh, bottom feeding. And it's helped with the accuracy and the casting distance. It hasn't done a ton with the casting distance. Casting distance is only 25% off of your base. If your base is 45 meters, then you're only going to get an extra 10 meters out of it. So you don't want to do it for casting distance, but you might want to do it for accuracy. But honestly, I wouldn't, I wouldn't give you guys a hard time for doing it straight for spinning rod. That would be totally awesome because you get that control of your fish over your spinning rod. So that's kind of the whole thing when this comes to the spinning rails. Okay, so spinner baits. If you are spinnering on um, Winding Rivulet and Belle Isle River, go for it. The reason I just did three onto this because I love Belle Isle River. I also love Winding Rivulet still as a higher level. And I absolutely love Tungusta Miniature River. I catch so many fish on these and I've caught trophies and I'm just going to max it out. I did not max out spoon. When you're a low rank, spoons are kind of iffy. You don't have to max them out. Plain and simple. When you get to Cory Lake, you might get a lot of people that are suggesting that you use spoons. You don't have to. You can use spinners. You can still catch a lot of good fish on spoons. You don't have to try for spoons for, for um, trophies if you don't want to. As you can see, once you get out of Cory Lake, you're going to get into wobblers. Absolutely max out your wobblers, in my opinion. Period. You're going to use it a mass, use them a massive amount on Volkov. You're going to use them on Tungusta. You're going to use them on Actuba if you decide to, to troll around Actuba. And you're going to use them on Cory Lake. Okay, I found out that I used them so often that it was like one of the first things. It was immediate. As soon as they opened up, I immediately hit it because I immediately maxed it out because I knew how much I was going to absolutely use those. Okay, fishing with a casting rod, fishing with bait casting rods, using low profile reels, using conventional reels, using conventional reels down here. These are for the very special people who like to only have a setup for spin fishing. Plain and simple, if you are a hardcore spinner and you don't float fish, you may want to actually get into these. I have not and I will not. They're too expensive. And they're too kind of all over the place when it comes down to their setups. However, they're just like any other rod and reel setup. But when it comes down to your bait casting reels, casting distance and accuracy with a bait casting reel 5%, this ability develops together with the ability to use low profile casting reels. Meaning you can use this max this out five points and then you can put low profile it'll automatically max this out as well okay so you will actually get multiples if you do this it's really up to you um using conventional reels range and accuracy of casting a heavy bait casting reel five percent energy consumption when fighting fish decreases by five percent so these actually have kind of their own little open skills they're very unique to very unique people people who are only all about the bait casting and the spin fishing. If this is you, this is your wheelhouse. That's your places that you want to be. Okay. Um, so yeah, I maxed out wobbler. I still haven't done spoon yet. I haven't had a reason to. A lot of people say go for spoons for, for pike. No, I don't do pike with spoons because I found out pike really, really like top water lures. Yay. Top water lures. I love top water lures. Can you tell? This I maxed out almost immediately. I went to Ladoga, to Ladoga Lake. I, I I fished for about three or four hours, and I caught trophy sized pike out of that bad boy with topwater lures. So I maxed this immediately, and I still love using it, and I still will. I'm still saving points. I will be doing a jerk bait. I will be doing a, a, a rig with jerk bait because pike. I'm a pike fisherman. I like fishing for pike every now and then guys i like getting to a lake and seeing that cafe order and for pike three pike at 100 or 150 silver and i like going after those pike and so i'll be probably doing top water lures for pike and jerk bait see what i'm saying when it comes down to you you guys may not even like that so i got to wobblers and i maxed it out you may want to do wobblers however if you're on quarry lake and you really like spoons max it out and why am I maxing that out right now? I'm maxing it out because 
I just found out that I have no luck with spinners or wobblers on Tungusta River, but guess what I do have luck with? Yep, I started catching fish with spoons, so I'm maxing it out for when I go to Tungusta, and if I go back to Cory Lake and something's active on spoons, I'll be maxing that out. I maxed that out. I'll have that maxed out, I should say, and then I'll be doing good down there. Now, jigging. <sighs> jigging, 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 and did I mention jigging? Okay, you are going to have, if you're getting into jigging, you're going to have to use all of these a whole bunch and test them out. Drop shot rig is a really good rig for fishing from the bank and pulling fish in without getting snagged. I have a beast of a time trying to get a jig step with this, and I don't catch very many fish with it. I don't like the way it feels. I don't like the way it handles. That is just me, though. I'm just saying. Carolina rig. Carolina rig and a three-way rig are almost exactly the same. Basically, they both allow you... Uh, let's find it. Carolina rig. As you see, Carolina rig is basically has your weight bullet up there and it has your leader behind it. A three-way is almost exactly the same, but your lead, your your weight is on a separate leader. The Carolina rig is pretty much the same thing as the three-way rig, rig, but it's a little bit more clean. I do not have good luck with the Carolina rig. I just do not. The the fish absolutely do not like when I use a Carolina rig. I have an okay time when it comes down to, what was we on? We were on here. I have an okay time when it comes down to the three-way rig because the three-way rig allows a lot of movement, a lot of floating. But I only use the three-way rig basically when I drag the bottom or when I drift with jigs. And I don't use it enough to put any points into it. So the Carolina rig and the three-way rig, just choose one. Okay, the Texas rig is exactly the same thing as the jigging rig. The only difference is, is with the Texas rig, you've got a bullet. You've basically got a bullet. Um, what's it called? A, 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 here's your jigging. You got a little ball. It's, it's a weighted, it's a weighted hook. With your Texas rig, you've got a separate bullet weight on it but you've got more options when it comes down to your hook. So a lot of people really truly like to use the Texas rig more than the jigging rig because they have a lot more options when it comes down to size of the hook and the quality of the hook. Jigging has a lot less options because your weight is part of your hook. I, for the life of me, cannot get a proper jig step going with a Texas rig. I cannot catch fish with it. I don't know why. These three are so bad for me, I don't understand why. So I had a better time with the jigging rig. I maxed out my jigging rig. It is all about my preference, and I maxed it out. A lot of people will max out the Texas rig. There's nothing wrong with it. That's absolutely fine. When it comes down to the wacky rig, this is where your ultralight setups and your light setups come into play. Uh, basically, wacky rigs, you can get medium weighted ones and you can get super light ones. To fish with these, you're going to need light gear. It's that simple. I've tried it with heavy gear. It's not very good. Um, I like jigging with wacky rigs from the bank of um, Seversky Donets. Uh, I like fishing with it for... Uh, sunfish and stuff like that, smaller fish and stuff like that, but I don't want to put any points into it because I don't catch big fish with it. Um, and I don't really care if I get trophies in smaller fish. It's that simple. So you ultra light users and you medium light and light users, rig users, this is probably your bread and butter right here when it comes down to jigging. Okay. All right. We've already talked about that. We've already talked about the jerk bait. The jerk baits are basically for big predatory fish um, I probably won't put any into the rod uh, spinning rod I'm starting to consider just because of the control of the fish but honestly most of your spinning rod stuff when it comes down to it you're going to be trolling and when you troll 
you can chase down a fish. So there's not really any reason to put points in the spinning rod until you start fishing from the bank and you start hooking fish that are trying to spool you. Okay. Then you may want to consider putting some into the spinning rod, but I haven't put any, any, any into any of the rods for spinning because I don't feel the need to. And it's just, in my opinion, because I'll be trolling with most of my spinning rods, um, it's not needed. The control of the fish is not needed. When I fish from the bank, I usually fish with a larger spinning rod setup, and I don't need to control of the fish because I can bring them in fairly quick. So that's why I'm not putting any anything into the rods up here, and I won't be putting anything into a jerkbait rod. But I will probably be maxing out the jerkbait um, for pike fishing. This is some interesting stuff. The Cibolone, the Loni. Let me just show you what the heck that is. Spin fishing up here, the baloney with the rule with a lure. These basically have floats on them, they are jigs and lures with floats on them. You can open these up in float fishing as well. These are connected with the spin fishing over here. Uh, I don't see a lot of people that use them every now and then. You'll see some when it comes down to the float fishing people. But when it comes down to spin fishing people, you don't see people a lot using these a lot. So you're probably not going to end up using them. But try them out. See if you like them. You never know. All right. Now that we're done with spin fishing, let's go ahead and talk about the last but not least, the float fishing. When it comes to float fishing, the first thing that we're going to start out off in the game, as you guys remember, is, tele is telescopic rods. Telescopic rods are the biggest pain in the butt to me I can possibly imagine. Now, I'm not going to give too many hard complaints when it comes down to float fishermen because I've met a few and they are they are the man's man. To be able to have the patience to do this. These guys are just monster fishermen, okay? There's one there's a couple of guys that are in M Dog's chat um that are it, one goes by Zhao in and I can't remember the other guys. There's a couple other guys. They're, they're, they're pure float fishing guys. And you guys know how frustrating float fishing is. So I'm not going to give these guys a hard time whatsoever. Float fishing is just... I'm getting into float fishing. As you can tell, I'm up to 82%. I like actually float fishing. I really do. And I was really surprised that I started to. I think what it was is the telescopic rods I hated because they, they're not forgiving. You can't really pull in... It's hard, I should say, to pull in a fish that's bigger than what your telescop, telescopic rod and lure and everything else are ranked at. Okay, so most people who put points into this, these guys are the guys that go out to Amber Lake and they max this out and they take a tele telescopic rod and they they get huge carp by and, and then they get on they get huge carp with a telescopic rod and then they get on the record boards and they do that specifically for that. And that's why they have this maxed out. Most people won't max this out when they first start the game. Um, Usually, the first thing you might want to consider is using a Balinese rug and a Balinese rig. This will get you your trophies with your Balinese rig. Your rod will get you the control over the fish. I like these two right here, mainly because <clears throat> Balinese rod is exactly like a telescopic rod with a reel on it. With a telescopic, telescopic rod, you don't have the... the um, the leeway or the forgiveness of having a reel on it it's gonna if the fish is too big it's gonna snap your gear at least with the Balinese rod you have the chance of getting the fish in maxing these out will give you control over the fish so it's probably a pretty huge help for telescopic I probably wouldn't max out my rod on the Balinese rod just because I'm really only going to be fishing for you know sitchel size fish sitchel uh, bleaks gudgeon stuff like that smaller fish I don't care if I get a trophy with a smaller fish. There's some people that are out there all for tr bleak trophies, but not for me. It's just, just give me, give me some skills. So you might want to consider the Balinese rod. It's up to really you guys what you want to do. I use the Bolo rig, and if you're leveling it just to level, I wouldn't put any points into it. But if you're actually trying to be a float fisherman in the game, you probably might want to max this out because what's going to happen is you're going to use this 
all the way up until you get probably either the slider rig or you're going to be using the carp hair rig where's the other one there's a pop-up and then there's a sinking one where's the other one carp hair rig right here these are exactly like the feeder fish skills why did i say feeder fish not feeder fish uh feeder bottom bottom feeder fishing skills carp hair rig bottom hair rig. these are going to be your bread and butter when it comes down to your float rigs okay so if i was to do it over again i probably would have maxed this out just to to help me get some trophies and level all the way up to my match rod that's the reason i've been using float fishing is to get me up to a match rig and a match rod okay because match rigs and match rods are exactly like a bull rod but they're used for super big fish they're used for monster fish so when you're going for sturgeon when you're going for carp you're going to be using a match when you're using bait fish you're going to be using a match rod okay so you may want to consider maxing out balinese rod if you're actually going to mainline um float fishing because you're going to be using this all the way up past using a leader um you're probably going to be using this for fishing carp at like bear river or bear lake sorry bear lake or oldberg um skip over the slingshot in my opinion and then you get to a slider rig i like slider rigs i don't know why basically when you do normal float fishing you have on your on your float fishing rods you have where's my bolo you have a specific depth that you can go with a fixed with a fixed where is it fixed 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 line okay this is your very basic fixed uh, float line so it doesn't slide what a slider rig does is you can use as much you can go as deep as you want this is limited when it comes down to the depth this can go you can go as deep as you want because it's a slider rig what happens is you're you take it out of the water and the float actually slides down the line to your bait and then you've got this nice aerodynamic heavy bait on the end that you fling that out there you get a ton a ton of distance and then it hits the water your bait sinks slides the line through your through your float and then it hits the stopper a little kind of like a little weight that's attached to your line it hits the stopper and it stops so you can go as deep as you want with this i like to use this when i bream fish with my float rods i really enjoyed using a slider rig so you might want to consider doing something like that but your bread and butter is going to be your carp hair rig because you're going to be doing float fishing um, on Bear Lake and Amber Lake with this and sinking bollies also at tuba and then when it comes down to did I say bollies I'm sorry guys boilies for the weird people and then this one's going to be your other bread and butter which is going to be what you use for big carp on um, Amber Lake uh, and possibly some big carp on on Bear Lake but don't skip over the the using slider rig try it out I had a lot of fun with it. I was able to float to float fish very deeply for breams with it, and I had a lot of fun. But you know, the fixed line rig is nice because it's exactly the opposite of the slider rig. You have a limited amount of distance. I think you can only go three meters with this, and that's it. So that's why I never would have put points into this. I would have point put points into the slider rig, or I would have maxed out carp hair rig and carp hair pop up rig. These are, like I said, these are going to be your bread and butter here. And then sandwich bait is fantastic. This allows you to use multiple baits on a regular hook. Uh, obviously, there's no points in you can put into there. I wish there was. This would be actually really cool if there's points to put into here. Because this is technically your rig. And I think they should put more points into here. Skip over your use of Cobra. Your bait fish. Actually, I skipped over, I skipped over match rod with this one if i was going to put any points into anything i would put it into these two carp hair rig carp hair pop-up rig match rig match rod the match rod is what you're going to be using for catching your monster monster fish on floats okay your rig is going to be when you're not going for carp you're going to be going for pretty much everything else that doesn't take bait fish 
So if you're going with mussels, if you're going with uh, cockafers, if you're going with rhinoceros beetles and stuff like this, it's, it's going to be your probably your match rig. This is what also uses a waggler. Uh, I believe this is what uses a waggler. Let me let me check here on uh, my uh, the, the, the Balinese rod. Go up here. Go into match rig. Match rig uses a wa yeah it uses a waggler weight. The waggler weights are awesome because they're super super tall super tall weights or super tall floats. I'm sorry, waggler floats. Super tall floats that are easy to see. They're really really cool looking. And honestly, there's a lot of people. Um, that claim that that's pretty much some of the best fishing that they have is, is, is on the match rig. Okay, so you're probably, if you're mainlining this, like I said, car pair rig, car pair pop up rig, match rig, match rod. And then when you get down to bait fish, you're looking at sturgeon and those that really weird fish that I can't possibly pronounce the name of starts with bell out at. Um, Octuba and stuff like that. And then you jump into these again, which is basically your Go over here come over here change this your Your sir baloney sir baroni only jabroni uh, Yeah lure and and wobbler with this and this is basically just like I said it looks that's exactly what it is It's a float with a freaking jig or a or a wobbler on it I don't know how to use them. I don't know if you you reel them in just like a regular spin fishing reel, which I'm assuming that you do. But um, so once you get down to that, that's what that's what those two things are. So uh, basically, with this, like I said, it's it's probably pop up hair rig, uh, regular carp hair rig, match rig, rod. This I might have done the slider, and then probably your bait fish right there. So yeah, that's basically it, guys. Um, this is pretty much it. That's the whole that's the whole thing. It took us an hour. It took us probably about two episodes. I haven't decided if I'm gonna split this or not. If I do, you guys will know. As you can see, we'll be returned 50 points if I reset this. And I could honestly go into each one of these and tell you exactly, exactly what I would put all of my reset skills into without even thinking about it. So I was considering at the end of this episode, just saying, okay, if I was to reset all of these, this is what I would do and go through and, you know, kind of virtually just show you exactly what I would have put all of my stuff into. Um, but I think we've taken a long enough. So hopefully that helps you out. I think I covered all of the topics. I did an outline of this because it was going to be such a monstrous episode. I haven't decided if I'm going to split it into two. I think I probably might. If you like the video, hit the like button. If you didn't hit it, just, just don't hit it. That's fine. But there's a, there's a link in the description below. If you want to support the channel, you want to get your name on the, on the starting of the channel, you can click on that link and uh you can click on that link support the channel keep great great videos like this coming out hopefully you guys liked it hopefully you guys learned something if you did hit the like button um keep gaming keep doing it midnight have a blast we'll see you guys in the next episode take care have a good one and bye bye i can't believe i chose this spot what an absolute horrible idea one freaking fish and it was a perch i guess it was good for the episode i don't know we'll see you guys later